Salt River in Cape Town is adorned with colorful murals, much of it produced by world-class graffiti and street artists. It's an obvious attraction for local and international art enthusiasts and tourists. And there's a tour guide gaining a reputation for opening people's eyes to this art form in a truly unique way. Masa met Winston Fani, a guide with a rare skill making an extraordinary impact. Ladies and gentlemen, look at the mural which is titled Man with Dreadlocks. The artist behind this mural, uh, his name is May, he's from France, he was born in 1990. Winston Fanny is a tour guide working in Cape Town. His beard is made of bushes, he looks like a raster. He's taking us on a walk through the suburb of Salt River for a unique perspective on the local street art. Every artwork in this tour, there's a theme behind it. My name is Winston Fani. I'm the first blind tourist guide in Africa and uh, I think uh, possibly in the world. The story of how Winston went from a call center agent to a much loved tour guide was some might say written in the stars. The beginning of Winston's career change had an unlikely start. Meet Gladys who is Winston's wife, Busisiwe's guide dog. Like Winston, Busisiwe is also blind. Gladys was raised by Tanya Robertson, a puppy raiser for South African guide dogs. Gladys was my lockdown dog. Um, she crept into my heart and she just, I, I absolutely adored that dog. In 2022, shortly after Gladys became part of the Fani family, fate stepped in when Tanya and a friend planned a visit to check in on Gladys and Busisiwe. We hadn't met Winston before, um, and we were driving through Mfileni, um, which is a very confusing township, and Google, first of all, can't hold a signal inside of Mfileni, and second of all, has got no idea what roads are actual roads. Fortunately for Tanya, Winston came to the rescue. Winston said, don't worry, I can give you the directions. And he said, he said, just describe to me what's around you. So I did. He said, oh, okay. So travel down this road for probably another block. And then you'll see there's a green, there's a green building there. Meticulously, Winston guided Tanya and her friend straight to his front door. He wasn't even in the car, but his directions were spot on. And it, it was, it was mind blowing to be directed through a township with no markers that I could see by a blind man on the other end of a telephone. Uh, if you look to, to your left hand side, there's a beautiful view of Tape Mountain. Yeah. Okay. And the Winston's two hour interactive walk starts in front of the Society for the Blind. Those of you who are doing the tour with me for the first time, can you please uh, interact with me in this tour? Okay. Uh, please uh, let me know of the unusual obstacles Oh, uh, like cars parked on the pavement. Don't give me a hand, just, just let me let know. know. Yeah. Okay. okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Born partially sighted, Winston was diagnosed with glaucoma, a progressive eye disease. He was around 13 years old when he lost his sight altogether. Take us through the extent of it. Like, what do you see? I can differentiate when it's dark and when there's light, okay? And like, if I, I get closer, to something like, say, a, a, a pole or a tree, I can hear, I can see a shade, but it's that by uh, sensing it, because remember, in the absence of my eyes, all my other senses are strong, just to fill, that, to fill in that space, that missing space of my, of my eyes. What, what is it that, that, that is uh, drawn there? That's a screen of a cell phone. I thought those were apartment blocks on top. Yeah. yeah. Without, without seeing it. The insight Winston brings the to the tour the comes from detailed research and conversations with the artists themselves. Winston, you just said art is? It's a powerful tool of communication. Powerful tool of communication. Yes. I love that. Well, it's, it's, speak, it's speaking volumes. But a tour guide is not a natural fit for a person without sight. To be honest with you, man, uh, I never thought of becoming a tourist guide uh, at first. Up until I was retrenched for, from a company that I was working with from, uh, due to COVID. Mm -hmm. no. 
finding employment was a struggle. Busisiwe was the sole earner. They had to move to Mfuleni Township where she had family. I'm sorry to take you back to that time, but you know, that period when you felt like the walls were closing in, just take us through that journey for you and your wife, Busisiwe. She made me strong, okay? Because she kind of like took care of everything. And it, was not, it, was, it wasn't sitting me well. A soldier only dies once, but a coward dies a thousand deaths. So I'm not a coward, so it was frustrating me. But on top of that, you're looking for a job and you're visually impaired. Yes. That was a challenge. I had to wrestle with that every day, okay? You know, uh, men are, are born with, e with ego. I tried to keep my cool, uh, but yeah, ego is there. It's something that a man is born with. Winston and Busisiwe have been married for seven years. Okay. Gladys, you want to join us? Can you want to come sit between us? Love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's very special. And she makes me jealous because just like what you did, you only first and come and greet Gladys before you greet me, eh? <laughs> <laughs> She's the star of the show. Yeah. Busisiwe lost her sight after a car accident in 2012. What's life like now? Ah, uh, I uh, it's it's better than before because I was very ignorant when I was sighted. Now I'm very much cautious with everything. If you are a blind person, if you, you you're doing something, you have to do, use like 200 percent rather than using 100 percent. On the back of Winston's impressive navigation skills, Tanya had a light bulb moment. Winston would make a great tour guide because his, his attention to detail is amazing. His, his ability to communicate that to the people around him is absolutely incredible. I saw an opportunity of being able again, put food on the table again for my, for my family, being a provider. I'm not scared. I, I, I like challenges, so yeah. Oh, he's so well driven. If he wants something, he goes for it with a full potential and always positive about everything. The next step was fundraising for the tour guiding course. From backer buddy to Facebook to reaching out to the media, Tanya exploited all avenues. It was a radio interview that Winston was a part of that was heard by just the right person that got the ball rolling. There was a plea um, from an operator talking about Winston's story and his journey. Inver Dumini, CEO of Cape Town Tourism, saw an opportunity to make a difference. And I said, what can we actually do as Cape Town Tourism to make that dream come true of him becoming a, a tourist guide? And to his eternal credit, Enver just said, yes, whatever you need, yes. And then we just had to find um, a tour guide company that would train him. Being on Winston's tours is truly remarkable. He has such a deep understanding of the lay of the land, understanding how many steps he needs to take to get to each pole, to get to each street corner, bringing you from one beautiful art piece to the next. It's a beautiful thing. Again, Tanya played an integral part in Winston's preparation. She was his eyes, walking with him until he memorized the roots. She kind of like gave me the landmarks, taught me how to navigate myself around this place. In order for you to be perfect in what you're doing, you need to know the road by heart, creating your own landmarks without having to see them. Only by bumping to them hard sometimes, then you will know that the next time that there is an obstacle there. Winston took his first tour in July last year. This is our local artist, this is from Joburg. Okay, it's, it's the interaction between the bees and human population, okay? And the impact would it cause if there were, no, there were no bees? Once you get to meet Winston and his ambition of what he wants to do, for us it was a thing of saying, well, how do we change the status quo? And Cape Town is always portrayed as being one of the most beautiful cities in the world. But how do you see the city if you're blind? How do you experience the city if you're blind? And that became actually, and sorry to use it, an eye-opener for us in saying, well, what could we do to get us to see our own city in a different light? Four, if you stretch out, there we are. Here's the yellow frame. 
And the QR code is right here. Yeah, no, there are braille plaques and QR codes that link to recorded explanations by Winston on the street art murals and the yellow frames dotted around the city's tourist attractions. The aim is to increase the access of public art to a larger audience. Called Limitless Cape Town, it's a joint venture between Winston and Cape Town Tourism. There are a few restaurants, okay, down Crema Road. So I want to combine it, put it do, it, do a three-in-one kind of a tour. Okay, art, street art, street art walking tour, gin tasting and food tasting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I'm busy trying to come back for that. I'm trying to put together that. Winston has never been shy about taking on challenges, living his life not as a disabled person, but what he calls a differently abled one a characteristic Tanya recognized when they first met. For the love of a dog, we, we connected. And for, for the love of a dog, we could change the world for one person. And who knows, maybe they go on to change the world for somebody else. What started for Winston as a way of putting food on the table has developed into a passion to change the way he and other differently abled people live in the world, a world he believes has limitless possibilities. Thanks for watching. Why not drop us a comment below? We love reading your opinions. Remember, you can now access Carte Blanche stories anytime, anywhere, even offline. Carte Blanche, the podcast, is now available on all major podcast platforms. So be sure to hit that follow or subscribe button and be part of our growing online family.